We witness so that other people who don't know God can know him. And for those who are bound up, they can find freedom. And for those who are wondering who they are, they don't have to go to a psychic. We can go to them. Say, listen, you can discover your purpose. And don't feel like you're worthless. You can make a difference. This is why we witness, because a lot of people just don't know. They just don't know. And we can encourage somebody that way. You know, that would help somebody more so than prophesying that they're going to get a new house or a new car or a new job. People need to know, tell me about me. Amen. 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 Now, this is the last installation in this particular mini-series about love. And I'm so grateful for everything that God has shared and people from all over. And we're just grateful, so grateful for those on our online campus from literally all over the world who watch us and they're just blessed by what God is sharing, what God is saying. So we're going to continue. And today, be a witness who lives to love. Be a witness who lives to love. I can't wait to get up in the morning so I can love somebody. I'm going to love all day long. This is what I live for. Oh, you haven't said that before, have you? Can't hardly wait to get to work to love somebody. Can't hardly wait for somebody to pull out in front of me so I can love them and say, Lord, just bless them. (laughs) Amen to God. All right. So, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1, we're going to jump down to 5 and 8. If I can speak in the tongues of men, even of angels, but I have not loved that reasoning, intentional spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love for and in us. I'm only a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. Yes, it's good to hear, I love you, but please back it up with something. Or else you're just talking, talking, talking. Amen? Amen. All right. So, verse 5 says that love is not conceited. Love isn't arrogant and inflated with pride. So this, this causes us to see how we need to change. You know, the Lord isn't saying you shouldn't be prideful. The Lord is saying love isn't prideful and you need to show love. So if you show love, you don't have to worry about not being prideful because love automatically is not prideful. A lot of times people are like, I have to stop being so prideful. I have to stop being so arrogant. You don't even have to worry about that if you just simply love because love takes that away anyway. Love is not included in love. All right. Because love is about somebody else. That's right. It's about somebody else, not about us. I'm not loving you so I can get something in return. Amen. Or am I? Amen. Or am I? Come on. Oh, come on. Y'all done forgot it already. For God so loved the world, he had a purpose. There is a purpose to love. Y'all don't forget these lessons. Yes, I am loving for a purpose. There is a purpose for my love. God wanted us, so he gave his son to buy us back. Because we were lost and in sin, and so Jesus had to die. God said, I have to have a blood sacrifice, then I'll forgive sins. So Jesus had to die. There is a purpose. I started to say, look at your neighbor and say, there's a purpose. But just know there is a purpose. (laughs) Love is not conceited. It isn't arrogant. It isn't inflated with pride. It is not rude. Unmannerly. Mind your manners. Amen. 
and does not act unbecomingly. Uh, my aunt, my mother's sister, used to always say, act pretty. Act pretty. That was her way of saying, don't act up. Act nice. Be not, act pretty now. Act pretty. Stop that. Act pretty. That's what the Lord is saying. Y'all act pretty. <laughs> act pretty. You, you, you know how when you, when, you, when you dressed up, you know, it's a certain, especially Amaya, my, my little two-year-old. Gracious, don't put a dress on her. Oh, she... Completely different attitude all through the house. Act like you're always dressed up. Always dressed up. All right? Don't act like you have your bed clothes on. No, you have your bed clothes on. You know, nothing matters. Always act like you're dressed up. Act pretty. All right? Even fellas, act, act pretty. Don't, you know. All right, all right. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way. Somebody said, well, if it's my right and somebody is trying to infringe upon my rights, why can't I? Love doesn't insist on its own rights or its own way. That does not mean let people step all over you. That does not mean to allow injustice to prevail. What it means is when we look at God's love in us, we don't have to insist on our own rights. If it's your right, it's going to work out all right. Amen. Whatever working you have to do, Make sure you're not insisting on your own rights because what happens is, and, and this, this, this particular lesson is going to help us with comparisons, all right? It is nearly impossible to love and insist at the same time. There is a loving way to make sure people understand this is my right. I don't have to insist on it. This is my right. I don't have to be belligerent. I don't have to be mean. I don't have to be cruel. I don't have to be rude. I don't have to be unmannerly. This is my right. That's just, I don't have to insist on it. This is my right. There are certain rights that you have if, if the police pull you over. There's just certain rights that you have. You don't have to insist. I mean, it's just simply my right. That's, that's it. Do y'all get it? Oh, okay. I want to make sure that you, that you got that. And it's, for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. This is very, very, very important that we understand these things, that we check our own attitudes, our own mentality, how, how we approach life, how we approach people. I'm not seeking it for myself. I'm not touchy. Any little thing bothers you. Love isn't like that. I just, I just got to get away from that. I just don't like people. You can't have that type of attitude. People just always won't, just cling, just always won't from you. Well, a tree doesn't eat its own fruit. How, what, where, how are we going to get something if we don't get it from you? Why do you go to work? Nobody in here, even if you work for yourself, you don't work for yourself. Amen. Everything you do, you're doing it for somebody else. Wow. Yes. Okay. All right. Fretful, resentful. My gracious day in the morning. Uh, you know, I, I did that for somebody, and I wish I would have never done that for them. Love isn't like that. If they did something wrong to you, and you don't like the fact that they did something wrong to you, don't resent doing right by them. Don't be resentful. I did it because God led me to do it, and God's going to bless me for it. If they didn't appreciate it or if they did something bad to me after I did something good to them, that's between them and God. Why am I going to put myself in their business? I'm going to mind my own business. 
If, do you know that if somebody does something wrong to you, immediately God is supposed to take over, not us? You're not supposed to take over. Somebody does something to you, oh boy, they're in trouble with God. Because Jesus said, listen, you do something to at least my little ones, it's better that a millstone be hung around their neck and it cast into the midst of the sea. You know, the word of God teaches us it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Amen. You don't want to fall in the hands of God when he's angry. And you don't mess with his children. Amen. You just don't do that. Amen. Please remember that as a rule. Somebody does something to you. Oh, my goodness. They really in it with God. You step out of it. Let God avenge you. Let God judge them and the whole situation. Leave it alone. So your hands will be clean. I didn't do nothing. I didn't say anything. I don't even think evil against them. Nothing but L-O-V-E, love. That's it. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. You did this to me, it's like that sometimes. Remember what the Lord said last week. Some people don't know how to do right when they want to do wrong. They don't know how to override that wanting, that desire to do wrong. They don't know how to override it to do right by you. They don't know. That's why we have to, as, as the Lord said last week, we have to keep them in the atmosphere of love until they get it. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. If you're really thinking about what the Lord is saying to us this morning, it is a lot of work. It is not easy. But it's good. And this pleases God. God is love. Don't you know he does all of this towards us? That's why he wants us to do this towards each other. God does all of this. God isn't uh, touchy, fretful. He's not resentful. Like, look, I just blessed her. I just blessed her down there, and now she's going to do this to me. I wish I would have never even gave her that. God isn't like that. Amen. God is love. So when we read all of this, God isn't asking us to just do stuff. He's like this. He wants us to be like him. God is not rude. He's not unmannerly. We have such, such a, um, a visual of God that we need to ball up and, and throw away. God is so loving. He's so kind. So kind. Okay. Jesus commanded us to not judge others. Matthew 7 and 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. He commands us, don't judge. Don't judge people. All right? All of this right here is very important because it leads to judgment if, if you're arrogant. I'm judging myself better than you. If, if you have pride because of who I am that you're not rude, I don't have to be nice to you because I judge you as insignificant. All of these things have to do with judgment. Uh, acting unbecomingly. I don't have to be nice around you if I don't want to because I judge you as not deserving. Doesn't insist on its own right or its own way. When I insist, it's because I judge you as incompetent. You don't understand who I am. All of this has to do with uh, touchy, fretful, resentful. I should have never gave, I should have went with my first mind. <laughs> Takes no account of the evil, pays no attention to a suffered wrong. If you pay attention to a suffered wrong, it's because you're judging yourself. I didn't deserve that. And that person of all people to do this, we should not judge. And I'm going to tell you why. One reason we shouldn't judge is that most people choose either to judge or to love a person. You're not going to do both. You're just simply not going to do both. I told you this, 
this lesson is one about comparison. If you're going to judge somebody, you're not going to love them. They did this, this, that. You already judged. That's not love. And if you love them, you're not going to judge them. Because God alone knows the hearts of people. Only God knows the hearts of people, knows their thoughts, 1 Kings 8, 39. Only God. You don't know what people thinking. You don't know what they're going through. Don't judge them. I know she wasn't rude to me. No, this is what he said. Wow, she must be really going through something to be, to be that rude. Because she's usually not like that. He should be the only one to judge people, not any of us. Let God judge. We don't know people's hearts. The word of God is clear on that. When I teach people how to, uh, taught it, what, last week, week before last, whenever I was in Atlanta, how, how, to hear, how to hear God, how to know if it's God speaking to you. Number one thing is to know demons don't know what we think. They don't know what's going on in our minds. Devils don't know what's going on in our hearts. Only God knows the hearts of people. He, don't, he alone knows what we're thinking, what's going on in our hearts, our souls, our spirits. Amen. And as I often say, people ask, well, how does the devil know how to tempt me so well? He's so perfect in tempting me because of our big mouths. We let devils know what tempt us. Let devils know what we like and all this and the way we respond to it and all of that. That's that they don't know what we're thinking. They never can know. Only God. So God knows our hearts. People do not. Amen. They don't know why you're acting the way you're acting. So because we don't know why people are acting the way they're acting, we can't judge them. We have to love them. Because if we judge them, we're not going to love them. We're just not. We're not going to show them love. Okay. Verse 6. Love does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail, no matter how unfairly we're treated. If our offenders are treated unfairly, we should not celebrate. Oh, goody for you then. Goody for you. Because of what you did to me, now look what's happening. Thank you, Lord. No, no, no. And this is very important. Please, please, please get it like this. Somebody said, no, that's God getting revenge. You've been preaching it, Apostle Wall. God is getting revenge. Not if it's unfair. No matter how unfairly we are treated, if our offenders are treated unfairly, we should not celebrate. As if God used unfairness to avenge us? No, no. God judges righteously all the time. All the time. He's righteous in his judgment. And if he passes judgment on somebody and he condemns somebody, he punishes somebody, it's righteously done. He is never unfair. Amen. Never unfair. Now, to that individual, they may say, God, this is unfair. The only thing I did to her was such and such. This is unfair. No, it's not unfair. It's very fair. We have to be fair to everybody, no matter how unfair they are to us. I didn't deserve this, according to whose judgment. We should never even consider treating anyone unfairly through our words, in our thoughts or by our deeds, our actions, our responses. No matter how unjustly they've treated us or one we love. Don't even consider it. 
Don't even plan it in your thoughts. Don't even think about treating somebody unfairly. They did this. Well, shoot. Next week, Derry told, they know I'm going to need, no, they need me. That is right. I'm the one that, okay, cool. No, but not even in your thoughts because thoughts become actions or thoughts become words. So we have to, right up here, say, I will be fair. If we're not fair in our thoughts, we're not going to be fair in our words. We're not going to be fair in how we live and how we treat people. It's a choice. It's going to either be love or unfairness. So when we stand before Jesus Christ, how is he going to judge us? As being loving or unfair? See, that's, this, see this? What we do now determines how we're going to be judged later. So let's just go ahead and love now so we'll be judged as loving later. You go to school, however you perform in school, that's what's going to come out on your report card. Amen. It's the same way. However we living in life, that's what's going to... Don't do your homework. Right. Don't study for your tests. And let's see what happens. Amen. Amen. It's the same way in life. Same way in life. Yes. Study for your test. Are we going to be tested? Yes. Yes. Study for your test. That's what these messages are all about. That's what the word of God is all about. We're studying for our tests. Yes. Which determines if we're going to pass our tests. Amen. Amen. All right. And you know, someone said, how can I study for a test? You never know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen because the devil is a... Demons are creatures of habit. I guarantee whatever you're tempted of, you're usually tempted over and over and over the same thing all the time. Demons are creatures of habit because they're not intellectual. They're not sitting around trying to just, Avery, they're not sitting around trying to just study and trying to just to say things and, and do things just to make sure that um, everything that I bring against this person, I don't know, they may not know. They're creatures of habit. I got them before, I'm going to get them again. Just, but they repented, child, please. They told God they were sorry. Child, please, just give me a week to leave them alone. I'll go back a week later with the same temptation. I'll get them. Wow. Amen. Wow. Amen. But they just, they did, ah, this message was exactly what they've been going through. And they cried, wasted water. <laughs> wasted water. But they're real sick. I tried them this time to go. The demons go to their master demons. I tried them this time. I tried them. They're not. Give them two weeks. They never last more than two weeks. Just give them two weeks. Go right back to the same temptation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Remember you used to have uh, Operation Confuse the Devil? That's what we used to say right here at the uh, beginning, towards the beginning of our ministry. Devil come to you with something. God, I just bless you. Woo, God, you're so perfect. <laughs> Hallelujah. Operation confuse the devil. Yes. Devil don't know what, what? <laughs> because they always, demons literally get confused yes. because they expect us to act a particular way. Hallelujah. They always do this. These humans always respond this way, especially the Christians. Because they always feel God owes them something. Mm. 
So they never want to go through anything or else they think, oh, they got to go to God. Oh, God, I'm just going to, I mean, Jesus already told them they're going to suffer. The people are going to talk about them, that this is going to happen. People are going to hate them. And Jesus, already, they don't think about that. All they want to do is go to God because they just want nothing ever bad to happen to them. So we know how to get them because God gave us permission to let little things happen along and along in their lives. And so then we take their eyes off of Jesus and onto themselves. That's all demons try to do. Please know that. Demons don't want you to, to uh, pay attention to them. They want you to pay attention to yourself. They always, they're always trying to take your attention off of God. Pray, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like praying. I would much rather watch TV than to pray. Read the Bible. It's got the app. I'd rather go over to TikTok right. than the Bible. Right, right, right. I. Devils say as long as I get their attention onto themselves, I got them. I got them. We should never even consider treating anybody unfairly. Thank you, Lord. Why do we treat God so unfairly? He doesn't treat us like that. You don't want to talk to me? I mean, I pray. I say my grace. That's about it. Well, I mean, I like to pray before I go to bed, you know, right before I go to bed. Huh? Giving God the most tired part of your day, eh? When you're the most fatigued right before you crawl in the bed. We should love offenders with fairness. Did you, you, you remember your homework? What are some ways that you can show love? You can be fair to people. Amen. That's a way to show love. Yeah. Love people with fairness. Creating an atmosphere of love so they'll see they're wrong. Just right. like he said right. last right. week. Right. Right. I'm going to be fair. I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm going to be fair. It's a decision. It's a decision. What are we going to do? Are we going to be fair? Yes. I got one yeah. And I got an amen. Amen. We're going to be fair. Okay. Love bears up. This is verse 7. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Oh, my goodness. I don't care what you go through. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Does that sound like you? You hear something about somebody? I just believe the best. Of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. Lord, help us. Help us, Lord. Bears upon anything, ready to believe the best of every person. That's love. It takes love to do that. Yes. Yeah. Hopes are fadeless under all, so it doesn't matter the circumstance, doesn't matter what's going on. Fadeless. Endures everything without weakening. Lord, help me, Jesus. The reason our minds can't take the notion or even the reality of being wronged is that our minds aren't equipped to manage offenses. We're not supposed to think about offenses. Our minds cannot handle offenses. Only love in our hearts should be what we always use to bear the weight of anything we must face. Only love man 
this thing is heavy on my mind. Just got my heart so heavy. Everything is, I don't even know. I can't even, I don't know. Because the mind isn't supposed to deal with stuff. Only our hearts of love. Love bears stuff. You're going through something hard. Use love to hold it. Our minds are weak. Minds go, the mind and the heart, same exact component, okay? The mind and the heart, completely the same. The mind is not the brain, all right? It's the mind. Oh, I said like this, the mind of your heart. Your heart, the heart, the part of you that reasons, the part of you that, that makes those types of um, views about things and people. So wishy-washy. That's why, we, that's why we said earlier, only God knows the heart. Yes. It's so wishy-washy. But love can bear. If you don't have love in your heart, you can forget it. You're going to go all over the place. But love, love, say, I, I got this. Mind, I don't know what to think. I don't even know what to think right now. I believe this all this long time. I, I don't even know. Love can hold it up and does hold it up. Amen. Okay. Use love. Never, ever, ever use reason to see only the positives in people, circumstances, and personal trials. Which is what this verse is talking about. Don't try to reason it out. Because you know what's, you know what's going to happen when you reason things out? I'm going to tell you, when you try to reason it out, you always end up judging. Right. You'll always end up judging. Okay, now, she said, I don't, why in the world was she? I don't know why. Because she has always you immediately start to judge. I know exactly why he did that. Because he's the type, we always end up judging. That's why we have to just choose. The, and then judging, what if we're wrong? And judging never settles it. No. Never solves it. If we go ahead and love, we're done. We don't have to deal with it anymore. If, if somebody has done something to you and you're still dealing with it, love is not there. Love is not there. Let love hold it up. Okay? All right. Verse 8, love never fails. Whew, thank you, Lord. Never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. There is never an end to love ever. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, yeah, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they'll be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth. But love never fails. You can't prophesy your way out of a situation. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, you did this to me? I prophesy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What's well, going to shut up and love? Amen. Love. All right. So if we ever choose anything other than love to manage offenses... And somebody does say, if we ever choose anything other than to love somebody, or even our pleasant events, good things happen. If we ever choose anything else other than love, our choice would be made because we refuse to love. If we ever do anything else other than love, we made a conscious decision, I am not going to love in this situation. It's very clear. Love is a choice. You can either love or hate. You can either love or talk about them. Love them or judge them. 
If we don't love, we have literally said, I refuse to love. Not because love failed to work for us. We never even hired love. Never said, okay, I'll give you the job just to see what what you do. Never even hired love. So it's not like love failed. We didn't give love a chance. We didn't give love a chance. As love doesn't always render an immediate result. And that's the thing we don't like about love. If I love you, I want everything to be bubblegum lollipops immediately. I want all of the negative feelings that I've had for this person to go immediately. Does not happen. That's why we don't like to love. Because love doesn't give us immediacy. Love doesn't happen on contact. The, the, the good feelings of it doesn't happen on contact. Amen. I, I just I need to feel better about the situation. I need to think better about it. I need to be better about this situation. Well, just love, and love takes some time. Let me go ahead and let you know right now. Yes, sir. It takes some time. Yes, sir. You know, l- love, love takes time to get it right. You can't, you can't just up in love like that. <laughs> Takes time to get love right. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Remember, I think it was last week, the Lord said, take your time. All right? A response is different from a reaction. Amen. We can react and say, oh, I shouldn't have said that. But if we take our time and think about it, we will respond correctly. What's the rush? Wow. I'd rather be slow to love than quick to judge. Come on. <laughs> Pastor Glove is like he's about to hit me. He's happy about that word. We probably need to say that to ourselves. I would rather be slow to love then quick to judge. So, love doesn't always render immediate results. So remember, love is patient, and it has to be for all people. People you like, people you don't like. Love is patient. Love has to be patient. Why does love have to be patient? Why? Because love is not easy to do. It's not easy to do. So love has to be patient. And love has to be patient because who we love, they're not going to change immediately. Amen. And sometimes who we love they don't change at all. So does that mean we shouldn't love them? I ain't gonna lie to you, they ain't gonna change. Oh no, we said like this. I ain't gonna tell them about their wrong. They're not gonna change anyway. They're not gonna listen to me. No, you go tell them out of love. Love is not a feeling. So it's not like out of a feeling. Like I don't even want to do it. That's exactly why you should love. That's why you should go talk to them and share with them. Okay. All right. So for our homework, simple. I want you to add this. The Holy Spirit does. Add this to your daily prayer life. Holy Spirit, show me all day and every day how to surrender to the love that you want me to operate in. And not just that, I want you to know, I will obey you. I need to surrender. So I say, dog, I ain't no love was all of this. I thought I could just say I love you and just, you know, treat people as as good as I can. Supposed to be as well. 
You want to treat people well so, so you'll be well. We cannot control how people will respond. Please know it. We can't control how people will react. But we can control how we react. You're in class and your teacher gets on you about something. You can even respond, please. Or you can say, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I should have been paying attention. I should have been. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. Please forgive me, Jesus. Yes, I'm going to pay attention now. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I should have been praying. I, I, I really been slack on my praying. Either, I mean, please. I, I ain't the only one not out here praying. Yeah. Wow. It's not good. Love, Holy Spirit, show me. Please show me every day, all day long. How am I supposed to surrender to your love? To just let you just love through me? How, how, how? And when you show me, I'll obey you. I'll obey you. Why? Because I want to be a witness who lives to love. I live to love. That's what we want to be. Woo. Let's live to love. We want to receive love. We want people to treat us right. So we have to treat them right. We do. We really, 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 really do. Now, beginning next week, as the Lord wills, God's going to talk to us about faith. But faith in a way that I have never heard it. Ever. I mean, ever. And so I, I see now why the Holy Spirit is taking us this way because love is all about God. This is how God is, all right? So we need to see how God is so we can be like him so that we can put our faith in him in a different way, in a completely different way. Because the beautiful thing about it is the fact that it is impossible to have faith in God for every single thing all the time. And you're an apostle and you're going to say that? Yes! It is impossible to have faith in God about every single thing we've needed. And I'm going to tell you why next week. And it is legal. It is acceptable by God. To not have faith in him about every single thing that we have needed. So I'm like, what the devil? Oh, I can't hardly wait. And it's right there in the word of God. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me get it straight. You're saying everything that I have ever needed, it is impossible for me right now to have faith in God. Right. And it pleases God. God is well pleased with it. Oh! You say, man, if I can't get there, I got to watch this. I got to see what in the world. And it's going to help you to not just understand God. It's going to help you understand yourself. Amen. And God's going to be so pleased. And I'm going to tell you what else it's going to do. It's going to increase your faith in God. Uh-huh. Gotcha. So, Father, we bless you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. Your word today was like a mirror, like we are in a big bubble that is a mirror. We see ourselves from every single angle. We see ourselves according to love. What is love? What is not love? We, we see our fleshly responses 
Let me see how we think. And we see the changes that you want in our lives. And you don't want us to focus on everything that, that you said love is and that love is not. You don't want us to just try to do those things. You want us to just simply love and those things happen automatically. And, and we get that. So, Holy Spirit, help us. Show us how to do it. We're going to do it. This, this is, we made the decision. You spoke the word, we're going to do it. And it helps us to understand God. Wow. God didn't treat us the way we treat other people. When we do wrong by him, he doesn't treat us the way we treat other people. Or does he? Father, you do. You forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. The same way we forgive people, that's exactly how you forgive us. If we stay away from people and, and we just want to keep our distance from people that we have quote unquote supposedly forgiven, you keep your distance from us. We don't sense your presence as we used to. Because your word declares whatever we sow, we're going to reap. We need to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Oh, Father, Father, forgive us for not loving. Forgive us. Now we know more specifically what you expect of us, and you have taken over a month to teach us. Thank you, Father. And so now we'll be able to have more faith in you as we live this out. And Father, I pray that, that you would cause uh, the members here, my sons and daughters and those on our online campus and the visitors from around the world, Father, will you please, please, by your Holy Spirit, remind them to love and remind them how to love. Holy Spirit, please, don't keep any of us in the dark. Bring us to the light. And show us how to love. In every single situation, what pleases you, Father, however you'll be pleased. Because we have to work, as your Holy Spirit is saying now, we have to work in conjunction with your judgment. You can't judge the situation if we don't do what is right or else we will be a part of that judgment. Your fair judgment. And, and both of us, would feel as if we were treated unfairly when in all, all actuality we were treated according to our choice to either love or to judge, love or to be unfair. So, so again, that we can be judged and found innocent, we are going to love because this is what you want us to do, so we're going to do it. It's not about a feeling. It's just simply about doing it. Our flesh doesn't want to love. Our flesh doesn't want to treat people fairly when they treat us unfairly. We don't live according to our flesh, but according to the Spirit, because love is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so, Holy Spirit, you're going to have to love through us. And so we surrender ourselves. As is our homework, Holy Spirit, show us how. Show us how to do this, to surrender to this love. Thank you for showing us ourselves and showing us our better selves. What would please you? Mm, mm, mm. We want to be the king's pleasure. We want to be your pleasure, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. So now let's pray for those who aren't saved. 
If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, he wants you, he wants you, he wants the love through you. If you don't know him, please come to know him now. He really wants you. Thank you, God. Mm, mm, mm. You're so perfect. Just repeat after me, just right where you are. If you need Jesus to come into your life, if you want to be forgiven of all your sins so you can go to heaven, so you can avoid the lake of fire forever, if you want to give your life to God, you need a do-over, like just, just forget my whole past, Lord. Just forgive me of everything in the past. I want to just move forward from here. If you want that, I want to pray with you. Just repeat after me and say, Father, I come before you right now by Jesus Christ who died for me and who you raised from the dead. Raise me now from the death of my sins. I'm sorry for sinning and I want to be saved. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Live through me and love through me. I want to please you. Father, I want to please you. Holy Spirit, love through me. Thank you for forgiving me. I'm saved right now. And I'm going to obey you yeah. Yeah. for the rest of my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if I ever fail, I will repent. I'll change my mind about doing wrong. And I'll do your will only. Thank you for being merciful and forgiving. In Jesus' name, I am saved. Yeah. Amen. Yeah.